computer. There we go. Okay. Okay, so what we're planning to do is do an, an orientation to the organization so that the new fellows have a sense of uh, what all the organization does and what all the pieces parts are and how decisions are made so that we can, um, you, you can make the most out of your time as a fellow. And we are recording this so that we can put it online so that people interested in becoming involved with IMA understand the organization because we are organized in not a hierarchical way so it makes it difficult when people are coming in to figure out how to fit in because most people are used to hierarchical structures and we're way more organic and node oriented um so let's see there we go uh first quick overview on what humanistic management is um, I'm taking this from the website. Humanistic management represents a human-centered organizing practices. Um, human welfare and flourishing is the end goal. And the purpose of management is to serve humanist, human flourishing rather than wealth creation. And that's like the super, super tiny, <laughs> tiny explanation of it. There's plenty of books. We have videos on the website that go into more detail and you know, there's a bunch to learn, but that's like what it comes down to in a nutshell. Last year, one of the things that we did, um, I think it came out of one of the discussions we had with the fellows, which was to create a manifesto for the future. What does this look like? And this was the high level view that we came up with. Our goal is to create and amplify economic, social, and psychological flourishing to protect all life on earth, basically through business. And our principles are valuing the whole human human dignity, pluralism, um, that things are emergent if we imagine what's possible, that we should be working collaboratively and all our projects should be impact oriented. And this goes not just for IMA, but like what we wish the world was like. And what is required for all flourishing is that all people are valued, that the systems elements are connected, planetary health is fundamental, Profit is put in the service of the common good and change efforts are coordinated and work synergistically. Obviously, this is a, a vision statement. So what does the International Humanistic Management Association do? And David, you can chime in at any time you want to. Hi, David. Um, our goal is to act as a hub for researchers, academics, practitioners, policymakers to, that are interested in the promotion of humanistic management and humanistic leadership and so that we can promote this idea and get it more widely accepted and more widely talked about and more widely implemented. We envision a society and economy that works for all. And again, this sounds very much like the previous <laughs> statement, but such a society promotes organizing practices that honor the inherent value of all life and protect human dignity. Management practices in such an economy promote human well-being and focus on flourishing of all life. The image you see on the slide is actually something that came out of the U Lab sensing lab we did, um, I think two years ago. Um, and it's a representation of the future state that we want. Money is in support of earth and humans. And then the, the Taurus with all the other stuff on it is institutions kind of working in harmony for the betterment of the humans that are part of the earth if that makes sense. So that was a project we did a couple of years ago and what came out of that. History of IMA. David, you might want to chime in here on this because I don't want to be the only one talking about it because I feel like I'm a bit of a newbie. Um, but a decade and a half ago now, right? You guys started meeting at AOM sessions, all the people interested in humanistic management and both the humanistic management network grew out of that and then out of the humanistic management network grew the association. So David, do you want to chime in on this? Yeah, I mean, I, I joined um, on sort of a chance meeting in, in the hallway of uh, the host hotel at the Academy of Management. Um, okay, it's probably been eight years now, so I'm, I'm a little newer than the the absolute uh, start of this, but um, Michael and I, uh, Matt started talking uh, 
realized we had a lot of similar interests and I had heard about him and, uh, and the humanistic management group and I was honored to meet him and we just sort of hit it off and realized that uh, this was uh, this this was a really special movement. This is uh, really something that uh, needs to be spread through the academy. So, you know, it started as this humanistic management network, and then um, as the interest grew in the group, we had the International Humanistic Management Association, and then more recently, uh, some more localized chapters. So there's a U.S. chapter that uh, Jen and I are on the U.S. board for, along with Michael, of course, and uh, we um, we have chapters in Italy and Mexico, um, Spain. Uh, I guess um, we have growing ones. For, there's going to be one starting in Amsterdam and, and Belgium. Uh, we're going to start one in France. So it, it's it's growing. And it's sort of this grassroots movement that uh, has a lot of momentum now since its inception. Right, and th I think there's an India group too. Uh, basically, this That's organization right. grew out of people getting together and saying, hey, we should be a little, you know, let's talk more frequently and more in an organized way and let's try to disseminate these ideas in a more formal way. We are not the only group out there doing this. Um, like I said, the, the, my first intro to this was the Humanistic Management Network, and then IMA is kind of an outgrowth of that and parallel to it. Um, so there's lots of groups that are talking about humanistic management, or they're talking about it as a tangential thing to what they do. Um, our ideas at IMA is that it's all good. <laughs> You know, and the more people talking about it, the better. Um, so amplify, support, however we can, all the various things. But the organic nature of the growth of this is, is really important to understand. You know, if you've got an idea or a, a subtopic or a country topic you want to do, or even a state group, um, it can grow organically just by getting the people together and saying, hey, let's let's do this more formally and creating the structures to do that. Um, which brings us to the structure. Uh, we operate through collaboration and consensus. Zane, can you please stop? Thanks. <laughs> My son is in a class behind me and he started playing with the blinds. Okay, so uh, we operate through collaboration and consensus. And every, it, it's a little bit difficult for people to understand because they think there's someone that can just say yes or no, um, but that's not how we operate because that's not how we think organizations should operate. Uh, at the moment, there is an international consortium of uh, academic institutes that David's center is part of. So it's a, cent a center of centers. I don't know how we're describing it. It's going as a centers consortium. Okay. Uh, it, it could have been called centers of centers too, actually. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, I guess, seven or eight, uh, seven founding members uh, of a group that, um, of uh, centers of excellence around business ethics, sustainability, social responsibility, um, that all have a common purpose and goal around humanistic management. So my center is Institute for Ethics and Business at, at Duquesne and we, uh, I, I've decided that its mission and uh, just its, its whole purpose is to promote humanistic management. And I, I pitched that to our donors because we're a funded center uh, a nice endowment and, and they just absolutely love the idea because it can span so many different things. You know, sick management even addresses such, uh, the uh, sustainable development goals. So no matter what fields you're in, I mean, the idea of well-being and promoting dignity is, is something that uh, crosses many barriers. So these centers are uh, collaborating and trying to share resources to get some projects going um, that would be more difficult to do on our own. And just having that humanistic management label on it is uh, something that I think has a lot of cachet. Right. So there's 
the international level of organizing that goes on and there is an international meeting i think that happens between the, the centers consortium but we also have national groups um david and i and michael are in the usa chapter um, we have groups in the philippines spain italy um, india mexico um, and like you know david said amsterdam france um, because collaboration is it's fun to do collaboration internationally i was just on a call with one of our people in the philippines yesterday who's going to be on teaching the teachers next week um, but it also is helpful to collaborate more locally um, so and on specific topics so as we've grown these things kind of grow up or organically and one of the things that we're talking about now with the fellows is to have subgroups um, on tourism or on entrepreneurship and things like that um, for people that are have specific interests within the larger umbrella of humanistic management. And again, these, these collaborations uh, or, arise organically through conversation and through a decision to collaborate or just to have regular meetings to bounce ideas off each other. Um, current projects, and this was organized as I was putting it together, I realized, oh, it makes a nice tree. <laughs> so the order of them is no particular um, order, except it looks nice this way. Uh, we have the Glo Global University Center Consortium for Humanistic Management, what David was talking about as the Center's Consortium. Um, we have different video projects that we do, um, like regular sessions, and I, some of you probably have seen some of these. We have the Humanistic Professionals Lunch and Learn, uh, the Teaching Teachers to Teach Values, Necessary Conversations, Intellectual Shamans, the Reading Group, and the PhD Network. But we've also done other things, um, like we're starting up an Emotional and Social Intelligence SIG, which is really you know, the Psychology SIG um the the fellows project which is in its second year we have a journal um we worked on a manifesto so as projects come up and there is consensus about it and also people willing to take the lead on the project the projects happen if no one's willing to take the lead and marshal it through it doesn't happen so yeah, and jen let me add another current project that just developed is the um partnership with the academy management social issues of management division on uh, racial equality we're starting a new series that um, will be linked once to necessary conversations but mostly it'll be a separate series where uh, we partner with um, the social issues division on uh, promoting racial equality uh, at the academy but also among our group right that was what we talked about on monday <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's so new. It was Monday. Um, so again, the way these projects came about is through consensus and collaboration. That's how these everything arose is someone expressed an interest in it and said, Hey, can I do this? And we've done it. I host the lunch and learn and the teaching teachers. And it's been hugely fun for me. Um, I get to talk to all sorts of neat people and no one's refused my email or phone call, which is also very cool if you're trying to uh, make connections with people, um, having an excuse to make that connection um, can also often be very helpful. So I've, yeah, and the other thing that's been good is having these conversations when things have been really tough this past year has helped keep my mental health, like, oh, there's still good in the world, so. Groups we support, amplify, and collaborate. Um, we are affiliated with the Principles for Responsible Management Education. We are a prime group on humanistic management. We're also a member of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. We have partnerships with the Global Dignity Project, Economy for the Common Good, the Wellbeing Economy Alliance. And then we also support and we amplify their work whenever possible. And we support uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, B Corps movements and things like that. Um, anything that is promoting humanistic approaches to management, I think is, is fair game for us to want to amplify. And mostly we do that, I think, through the blog. We have an open blog where people can post things and if it's related to humanistic management, sure, we'll put it on the website. We'll send it out to the membership and let them know about it. 
So um, anything you want to add, David? I, I think you covered that pretty well. Um, I don't have anything off the top of my head. Right. So the, the idea, again, is to support, amplify, and collaborate. Um, I'm a big fan of it's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets credit. The next big topic is how we onboard new projects. Uh, the way that happens is someone suggests a project or an idea. And if there's consensus around the group that's going to be taking responsibility for it, that there's a consensus that the idea is good. Um, and again, that could be a local group, a national or international level, it gets the go ahead. Um, the idea is then discussed and people interested in the topic and the project are recruited to take part and take ownership. Because if no one takes ownership, it just doesn't happen, right? Um, once a critical mass of people are involved or committed, the project is started and it happens. And it happens organically because people made it happen. And the key to success of all of this is people willing to take ownership. Like, you know, if you have an idea and you want to take ownership, just present it and say, this is a project I think should be IMA related. You know, can I get the, can I do it and have IMA kind of bless it? And the answer will be, let's discuss it. And if it's good, we'll bless it and you make it happen. Um, and a lot of people are kind of shocked that it's, it's that easy, but it's not that easy because it requires ownership and collaboration to happen. So resources that are available through IMA. Um, obviously, we have a website. We have a new membership website that's going to make finding people and finding collaborators easier. It's over at Ignite, um, and you're going to be getting information on that, um, I think, in the next month as we get the membership up and going. But you're going to be able to post stuff yourself, have your own blog. You can search membership. Um, it's, it's very, very cool. My son is an opera. He sings. Um, we also have a journal um, that you can publish in. Uh, assuming you can get accepted into it. And I think David can, uh, I have nothing to do with the journal. I think that's David and Michael, right? Yeah, I'm an associate editor. Uh, Michael is the editor in chief. And, uh, you know, we're still new. So, you know, we're five years old, so we don't yet have um, an impact factor. I think our impact factor just uh, just started uh, last year. So it's uh, it's under one. It was the first time we were eligible, so that's why it's it's so low. But we uh, are uh, we're growing. We're getting some big names some into the journal. So you check out the editorial board and everything. You can pitch to your schools that it's a good quality journal published by Springer. And uh, we're having a couple special issues, um, one of which is associated with a conference that I'm running at my institute at Duquesne. Uh, on different a thought leadership conference with different tracks of critical issues in humanistic management. This will be held virtually in January. And um, the idea is to um, bring people together to um, write on different topics like love and organizing and humanistic strategic management and things like this. And the uh, articles will be submitted to the journal for peer review and for a special issue. So. I think we have a couple special issues coming out next year and maybe missing one if uh, I, I know there are two there might be a third but uh, we publish quarterly normally and then we have uh, pretty much two special issues a year as well perfect um, a lot of the work we've done as an organization has revolved around video lecture series because we're so dispersed across the globe um, this just was a good way to have these conversations and make them available. One of the big ones is the necessary conversations. Um, and those tend to bring in big names and have necessary conversations, which is why I think the racial justice issue is, is being partnered with that. Um, out of the last year's fellows, there was questions on how do we teach values as new teachers. Um, so that's why um, I created the Teaching Teachers to Teach Values video series. Uh, we have Oscar Bulong uh, from Manila uh, at, next week. We have Mary Gentile the following week, uh, following month, and um, and so there's that. 
humanistic management professionals is um, uh, something Elizabeth and I do. Uh, we interview, we try to interview working professionals uh, like Dan Tier at HubSpot. We have Dean Carter from Patagonia talking about, you know, application. How do we actually do it in a real company? Intellectual shamans is, um, David, maybe you can explain that one more because I've never participated in it. It's, it's a series that uh, is usually once a semester. Occasionally, there's a special second one per semester during the academic year, but it's um, run by Sandra Waddick at Boston College and uh, Erica Steckler at UMass Lowell, where um, I guess actually um, the idea is based on Sandra's book, Intellectual Shamans. And uh, it, she basically interviewed top ap academics in this book and um, wanted people that were really making a difference in their fields. So various fields, including humanistic management. So she is a big name in the field. So she's able to get these people to come and speak to our membership um, and talk about sort of their life's journey. Perfect. Um, and if you have an idea for something like this, this is a very easy way to do it because it's a regular conversation. We have the PhD network and the, the reading group that David helps organize um, for PhD students. And that's one of the ways people enter. I know um, on Community Connect yesterday, uh, one of the people who joined, that's what she was looking for is a community of students like her um, that she can get to know and bounce ideas off. She doesn't have her dissertation topic yet. Um, so, but she knows she wants it to be humanistic related. Um, so those, you know, as a need arises, that's kind of how these things are created. Um, there's a need, we try to fill it um, and we try to amplify people's work. To that end, um, the website does include a quote unquote store. It's not really a store. It's more like a listing of books and resources on humanistic management that are out there from our members or that, you know, from non-members that are on topic. So anything that anybody says, hey, this is related, can you add it there? You know, if it's related, it gets added there. Um, so that's one of the resources as well. Can you think of any other resources we have for the fellows, David? Um. No, not immediately. I, th I think this covers it pretty well. Um, you know, we're working on getting other other grants that could possibly be funding down the road. But as you know, this fellows program is in its second year, so we're we're working on that kind of thing. That's uh, something that maybe even the power of the center's consortium together, we can uh, get some of this money that could like be uh, you know uh, used for your own research purposes, but uh, that's something that's in progress. Right, and I know um, we normally do have an annual accelerator that Michael puts on um, that is well worth going to if you can go, uh, because again, that's an international, it's an opportunity to have international conferences, uh, conversations, but also to um, figure out what projects are worth pursuing and, and recruiting people in to work with you on it. Michael, do you want to add anything? Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if we talked about these various networks and I think uh, Root and uh, Oliver are aware that we're connected quite closely with some of the B Corps. We have connections with the uh, conscious capitalism groups and uh, specifically the economy for the common good out of Europe where there are 2000 companies and more and growing, they have approached us to be an academic partner. So there are a number of opportunities possibly down the road for folks that are research inter interested to do that kind of research uh, with, with them. And this is remains to be structured, but there is that appeal um, of our group to those to those uh, organizations because we have more of a research focus. So just if you think about it uh, further down the road that there may be opportunities. And for those that are that have PhD students, et cetera, that could also be something to tap into. Great. I was trying, it took me a while to get to the slide that 
about all of that. Um, let's see. So that was pretty much the, um, the presentation on the orientation. And I am going to